what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? For a long time, I've heard that ESPN's Jamel Hill was a man hater, specifically a straight black man hater. I had been willing to give her the benefit of the doubt because I had never really heard her talk about relationships and all I knew was that she was a good sportscaster, a very good sportscaster. Then she made these comments about Donald Trump being a white supremacist and all hell broke loose. ESPN was trying to replace her. They was at least thinking about it. And a lot of people came to her aid, including a strong number of straight black men. And then, just like that, days later, she retweeted, I don't know if she retweeted or tweeted, but she tweeted uh, an article that was a hit piece against straight black males, where it was titled something along the lines of black men are the white people of black people, something like that. One of the most stupidest ass things I ever heard of in my life. And she co-signed it. And much of the article was just talking about how black men abuse black women and how we're to blame for all the problems in our community. How we're, we're just, and, and listen, they, they grouped us. Now we know we got some, some low lives in our community, just like all communities have low lives. But they grouped us collectively and they said black men, we're black men are like this. And they, they just pointed out, pointed at all of us. And this article was written by a dude who writes for The Root. The Root is owned by some white liberals. See, you got to be very, very careful where you get your information from. Because you have people out there that look like or act like they're on your side, but they're really the enemy. And so they'll buy up black communications so that they can control the black narrative. And that's what they're doing. They got a hit piece out on black males. There's a hit right now in America on black straight males. There's a hit. They're not worried about black homosexual males. They're easily controlled. They're not worried about black women. They're worried about black straight males because if black people stand any hope then you got to have participation from the black males. You got to have black male participation, straight black males. Right after, I'm talking about just a few days after black men came to Jamel Hill's, Hill's defense, like we rolled for her. And she just, just like that, just forgot everything, just threw us under the bus. And just grouped us all together. Now, here's the thing. If you play the game of love, you are bound to get burned. That's just how it go, man. That's man, don't if you don't like the game, don't play it. Man, if you don't like baseball, you don't want to get hit with the ball. Don't go up and get on the plate. If you don't want to ever get hit by the ball, uh then you need to stay off the field. Because if you're a player, any kind of player in any position in baseball, you play the game, you are going to get hit with a ball. If you don't want to play the game of love, don't play the game. Don't, don't even get in it. Go play something else. Go do something else. The game of love is a risk. And so if you play the game and you get hurt, you don't do yourself any good by being bitter and holding on to that bitterness and 
and trying to target somebody who hasn't done you wrong or, or, or grouping other. If I'm a, I'm a man and a woman hurts me, I can't grow if I hold on to my bitterness and I treat all other women the same. Uh, I treat all other women by the standard that the woman who hurt me held. I can't grow. If I hold all other women to that standard, I can't grow because that's a low standard. So the women who have higher standards, I'm going to miss them because of my attitude, because of my bitterness. I can't even get to those women. And, I, and a lot of people who have been hurt, especially the ones who, are, who have some education. Because here's the thing. A lot of these people that write these hit pieces on black males and that talk bad about black males, they got college degrees, and a lot of times people listen to them. But here's the thing. Going to college does not make you intelligent. Going to college, you go to college to get educated, not, not to become intelligent. You go to college to get educated, not to get intelligent, not to become intelligent. And a lot of these dudes are being passed off as intelligent. But really, they're just educated. And you know what they say about education. If you send a fool to college, he gonna come back as an educated fool. And there's a lot of educated fools out there. So you gotta be real, real careful with these people. The thing is this, you can't be a black woman in this world and hate black men but have a black son and raise a black son, you're unfit. You would be an un, you would qualify as an unfit mother to raise a black son. You would qualify as an unfit auntie. You know, some of them got little nephews and stuff that they say, oh, that's my boy, that's, I love him to death. But they hate black men. So you're unfit to raise a boy, if you hate black men and you're a black woman and you got a boy, you're unfit to raise black, uh, to raise black boys. And if you're a black man who hate black women, you are unfit to raise a black daughter because you can't give what you ain't got. If you ain't got no love, for her essence, for who she is. She is a black girl growing up to be a black woman. If you hate black women, how can you give her anything? You're unqualified. And if you're the custodial parent, your child needs to be removed from your custody because you are corrupting them. You have nothing to offer them. Now, I know you think you can do that. I know you think you can separate the two, but you can't. It's impossible to do it. You can't give what you ain't got. All of this bickering back and forth between black men and black women is, is childish, it's juvenile, it's silly, it's very immature. You cannot grow. If, if, if all I did, you, know, you, you hurt me, you know. If all we do is we have a conversation and all we talk about is how who got hurt the most. Man, we could talk all day long. Well, I got hurt because each person, no matter, even if this, this person over here did me, well, I know she did me dirty, way dirty than I could ever have done her. But in her mind, I did her more dirty than she could ever do me. Whatever dirt she did to me was justified in her mind. So we ain't going to get nowhere just pointing these fingers at each other. We're not going to get anywhere. We're not going to get anywhere pointing fingers at each other and getting on the internet and trying to air each other out. We're not going to get anywhere like that. If you are a black person in this country, in the world, and you love yourself like you say you do, like you think you do, and you really love yourself, you really got a real good opinion about yourself, a strong opinion about yourself. You have no choice but to get along with your opposite. 
If you're a black male, you have no choice but to get along with black women. If you really love them like you say you do. If you love yourself like you say you do. You have no choice. You figuring that out, figuring that out and loving her and learning to love black women again is essential to your survival. Black woman, if you've been hurt by a black man, you trying to figure out a way to grow. That's how you grow. You got to learn. You got to get over. Learn to grow. You have no choice but to figure out how to love that black man again, how to love black men again. You have no choice. It is essential to your survival. If you can't figure that out, you ain't half as smart as you think you are. And it's a lot of them think they're real smart because they went to college. They think they're real smart because they read some books. And just straight up dumber than a bag of rocks. Ain't got no common sense. You got people out there who ain't got half of that education that they have that understands that small little concept that is really huge in the grand scheme of their survival. You got people that they look down on every day that has figured it out. They may not have been in a, in a relationship for 20 years. Maybe they was in a relationship for five years, 10 years, three years, one year, whatever it was. Whatever they went through, at some point, they figured it out. And they know it takes two to tango. So anything, if I, if I enter into a relationship, no matter how dirty I get done, ain't none of us perfect. So I know I did something too. No matter what, I did do some things. I feel like, well, you know, the things I did wasn't as bad, but I loved her and I treated her good and she shouldn't have did me like that. I, I got it. I, I, I get it. I get it. But you did something and the partner did something and, you know, you may have done a hundred bad things in the relationship. She may have not done but one bad thing. But that, in that person's mind that did you dirty a hundred times, he thinks that one bad thing you did equals the hundred bad things he did. And that hundred bad things you did, that person who's only done one bad thing, or at least from your standpoint, because sometimes a person can do just just do something that may not even be bad. It may not be a bad thing, but in the eyes of the other person, that was a bad thing. You shouldn't have done that. So in that person's mind has only done one thing or had one transgression, they're looking at you like, man, how could you do me that dirty that many times and over and over and over and over and over again? So old saying, there's no sin greater than the next. We can dispute that all day long, but I'm just telling you, we got to get over this pettiness, this finger pointing, and this, 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 and, and like I say, it's an attack. It is a hit out on black straight males. This is the way, this is the greatest, this is the greatest tool to destroy the black community. If you can get rid of the men, if you can wash them out, if you can turn all the black men homosexual, you got it. You got it made. All of that quality, all that stuff y'all talking about, finally getting there and someday, man, that's, you can forget that, man. That ain't going to never happen. The only chance we have is to come together. That's the only chance we have. It's for straight black men and straight black women to come together. That's the only chance we really have as survivors. Now, I know a lot of y'all ain't going to want to hear that. But that's the only chance we really have. That's the only chance we really have. Part of being a good friend is telling a good friend when they're wrong. You know, tell them, tell them when, when they're wrong, you got to speak on it. You know, in a respectful manner, of course. But that's part of being a good friend. You know, not being afraid to tell a good friend when they're wrong. Somebody need to tell her that she's wrong. All of this 
this this this venom that we have for each other. We got to get we got to get past that, man. We got to get past that. And, and for some some of these some of these people that that's got that type of attitude, they in their 30s, they 40s, they 50s and just bitter, mad. I mean, they're more angry with the black man than they are with white supremacists. You got like homosexual males and black women, liberals, more mad about with the black man, upset with the black man than anybody. Again, we all got our issues. We got some black men in our black community, ain't worth shit. I will agree. Ain't worth shit. Some of them are breeders. They don't take care of none of their kids. They make the same mistakes over and over and over again. They are detriments to the community. They are what's wrong with the community. They ain't worth nothing. Those type of dudes, I think, if you call them out, be specific with those type of dudes. But don't collectively just put every, all the black men in one box and say, this is black men. I don't do that with black women. I wouldn't do that. That's unfair to the black women out there who are decent, who are holy. The black women out there who are upstanding. And I know a lot of them. So they, we got to get off of that, man. And, and when you got, when you see it, you got to call them out. You can't let them get. Don't don't let your friends have a pass. I don't let my friends get a pass. Well, I ain't gonna even say friends because my friends, my friends, I don't even deal with dudes who hate women. That's 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 how that's how much of a man I am. That's bad energy. I don't want to be around that. I need to. I need to be around some men. I like being around men, like men who are growing, who are building. Like, yeah, man, yeah, me and my wife, man, we, you know, we finna buy this property over. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of shit I wanna hear. Yeah, me and my wife, we just bought this property over here. You know, you know, yeah, man, me, me, you know, yeah, yeah, man, my, 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 my lady, you know, just, she just started, she just started uh, law school, and you know, won't, won't, boy, uh, yeah, man, we are, uh, we are, uh, we finna open up this uh, uh, nursery, man, and da da da. You know what I'm saying? Talking about building, baby. I'm talking about building. That's the type of people I like to be around. All that other stuff, man, that ain't going nowhere. That ain't going nowhere. I, it, 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 it just blows my mind how you have you know, black people who attack black people. Like, that's their goal. Like, you got your, you got your like, regular type of people that are real foul like the Charles Barkley's and stuff like that who are always attacking the black community ain't got really nothing hardly ever good to say. If they say one thing good about the black community, they'll say 10 things bad. That's Charles Barkley. I mean, he's real good at that. Ray Lewis, I mean, they real, real good at that. Uh, those types. They really, really good at that. Then you have the gender war. You have the black woman who in many cases are feminist who hates black men and the black man who hates black women but loves his mother. <laughs> That's an oxymoron, moron. Man, we got some work to do. We got some confused people out there. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from black women about black men is that we don't defend them. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the reason Jamel Hill still has a job at ESPN after calling Donald Trump, your president, a white supremacist is because besides her co-host, Michael Smith, many black men, many straight black men, including myself, came to her defense. But guess what? I refuse to penalize the next woman for the actions of another. Jamel Hill, when you co-signed that article attacking black men, straight black men, 
You did exactly what white people have done to black men for hundreds of years. You put information out there intended to teach black women to fear black men. Now, I don't know if you was trying to throw ESPN a bone after you got in some hot water for calling Trump a white supremacist, or if you were in a state of perceived intellectual superiority. I tend to think it was the former because you can't be a black woman but hate black men and be woke. No more talk. What, what the lady's is talking about. Yeah. Order, Texas.